Hey guys, so following on from the previous walk cycle tutorial, we're going to today be looking at creating a nice little run cycle. So in Blender, I'm going to select my armature and just go into pose mode with control tab. And I'm going to split my window uh, just by dragging from the top right here and go into a dope sheet window. I'm just going to select the action editor over here. And uh, over here, we can see we've got our little walk animation. And I'm just going to close that, create a new action, and call this the run. I'll just press this little F over here to uh, save the animation. I'm just going to shrink this window a bit. I'm also going to create another window, actually, um, just so that I can view my character from front and side at the same time. So I'll just select all the bones and press Alt R Alt G to uh, set it back to its default position. And uh, like I did in the walk cycle, I'm just going to hide the arms and the hat as well. I'll just select those bones and press H. And in edit mode on the on the mesh, um, I'll press Z to go into wireframe mode, C to bring up this nice selection tool, and just select the arms. And I'll select the hat as well. Just press P to separate by selection, and H to hide that object. All right, so now we've got a nice simplified view of our character. And um, just make sure that the keyframe mode is still set to location and rotation. And uh, with all of that done, we can begin. So let's start creating our first pose. This will be where the uh, character's foot is just striking the ground. I can uh, bring the other foot back. It will sort of be trailing behind somewhere over here. I can bring the whole body down a little bit, um, something like that. And let's rotate it just so they're sort of leaning into the run. Um, I'll rotate the head up a little bit. And from the front view, I want to select the foot and just rotate it 10 degrees on the Z axis. And this one, now uh, we can rotate this negative 10 degrees. I'm also going to just bring the feet slightly closer together. And I just want to shift the whole sort of weight of the character over onto the foot that it's stand, well, the leg that it's standing on, in this case, its left leg. And um, also just want to rotate the hips uh, on the z-axis, just sort of towards the, uh, the trailing leg. Not too much, just that, that probably is too much. Just something like that. Um, that should be good. Can uh, just rotate the whole body a bit so it's sort of leaning over the leg that it's standing on. And the head can just be doing some sort of subtle counter rotation. Yeah, just sort of in the other direction. Um, that looks okay for our first pose. Let's select everything, press I to insert the keyframe. And I'm going to zoom in on this uh, action editor over here. And go to frame 9. If you just press Control c and Shift-Ctrl-V, we can flip that pose and press I. And uh, now we've got our two sort of extremes. And I'm going to press T uh, to set the keyframe interpolation mode to constant. I just make sure that your mouse is over the action editor when you press T. Otherwise, that won't work. So let's go and make our middle pose, which is on frame 5. And this will be when our character is sort of just about to launch off the ground. So uh, this foot will be down. You can move it back here. Just give it some rotation. After you clear the rotation, don't forget to um, rotate it again, uh, 10 degrees on the z-axis. And this leg will have sort of passed and be around here, I guess. And we can just bring the whole body slightly up. Um, OK, the rotation of this foot is really weird. I'm just going to clear it and rotate it negative 10 on the z-axis and then just rotate it down a bit from side from side view, and that looks much better. Um, we want the weight to be even more over this leg now, and uh, the hips can sort of be swinging past with the, with the legs. It can sort of be about straight now. And uh, 
This can maybe be starting to rotate back and the head as well. And the whole body can sort of be leaning forwards a little bit more. All right, let's insert that keyframe and just see what that looks like. All right, it's a little bit difficult to judge with so few keyframes, so we'll just uh, keep going and hope for the best. I'm going to go to keyframe three now. And uh, over here, we want to just have the foot flat on the ground. Remember, rotate 10 degrees on the z-axis. Just bring it back a little bit. Um, Let's see, this leg can sort of be coming forwards. The whole body will go down a little bit as it impacts on the ground, just give it a nice sense of weight. We can have this starting to come over a tiny bit and starting to rotate. All right, let's insert that keyframe and see what that looks like. All right, that's looking good. So let's go to frame seven. And uh, this will be our one frame where the character is completely off the ground. So this leg will be far out over here. This leg will be also in the air, trailing behind, something like that. And this will also be the highest point for the character. So you can just move it all up a bit. And just rotate it even more forwards, perhaps. And I can start to come back now. I think I might have rotated it too far forwards. All right, let's try that. Um, yeah, it looks good. Let's set keyframe. Okay, so now let us. Uh, just select all these keyframes and press T to go back into Bayesian interpolation mode. And I want to go ahead and copy the uh, the rest of the uh, the other half of the animation, basically. So it will end on frame 17. So if you just alt right click to select this first column of vertices and press Shift D to duplicate it over. We now have the end point of our animation. And now we just need to go through each of these and press Control C and uh, Shift Control V to paste the flipped pose. Just quickly go through them like so. And that should be all of them. That looks right. So our, our animation is ending on frame 17. And since frame 17 is the same as frame one, we want to set our end frame as frame 16. And uh, let's go ahead and play that. All right, uh, it's looking a bit weird. What have I done wrong? Um, okay, I've I've duplicated the wrong frame here. Um, let me select here, Control C, Shift Control V. There we go. And it's now looking much better. Okay, that looks pretty cool. I think we can go ahead and uh, put the arms back in. So Alt A to stop the animation playing. Alt H to unhide everything. And I'll select the arms object, and then shift right click to select the main body. Just press Control J to join it back on. And uh, over here, I'll press Alt H in pose mode to uh, bring the arms back. And um, I actually just want to work on one arm uh, to start with. So let me just hide all of these other bones. And uh, in fact, I'm going to hide this arm as well. And I'll hide the hat again, it's terribly distracting. All right. So now we are simply working with the left arm. Let's go to frame one. And uh, let's start off 
by making this hand into a fist, just like so. Double tap R for trackball rotation, and uh, let's insert a keyframe on that, and we can now just hide these uh, finger bones, we won't be working with those anymore. And um, from the front we can just bring the arm uh, just a little bit closer to the side. And we can just swing it back. Something like that looks good. Insert the keyframe. Let's go ahead to frame 9 which is where we want our arm to be uh, at its most forward. And swing it like this, swing it up from the front, maybe just uh, rotate it like that. Something like that looks good. Insert the keyframe. And uh, for our frame 17, of course, we can just duplicate the first frame. And uh, that's already looking pretty good. Um, we're just having some uh, problems with the hand intersecting with the legs over here. So uh, let's go through and uh, let's say frame three. This can start rotating a bit. Frame five, a little bit more just so that it uh, swings nicely past the legs. All right, that's looking better. Um, as it's coming back, hold on. Let's just see. Um, over here, I'd like the the hand to still be sort of swinging back, and over here, still swinging back, and then only on this last frame does it actually swing forwards. All right, we need to start moving it away from the side. Let's see how that looks. Not bad. Is it intersecting with the legs anymore? It is a tiny bit. Um, just gonna have to try fix that. Let's see, on its forward swing, it seems to be completely fine. It's just over here as it's coming back. Uh, we maybe need to rotate this a bit more. All right, let's have a look there. That seems to have fixed the problem. All right, so we need to copy this over onto the other arm. So uh, let's pause the animation and press uh, Alt-H to bring our bones back. And in object mode, Alt-H to bring uh, the mesh back. And just Control-J again to join it back on. Um, we'll press Alt-R, Alt-G to clear the rotation. And uh, I'm just going to select all of these and hide them. We just want to work with the arm bones for the moment. So we're just going to go through every keyframe that we've set. And we'll select the side that we've animated. Press Control c then shift Control v to copy it over onto the other side. And then select all the bones with A and press I to insert the keyframe. So uh, I'm just going to try get through this as quickly as possible. And uh, once we've got this, the, the arms will sort of be swinging simultaneously, but um, then we can just simply offset them uh, so that the one starts halfway through, and then uh, we'll save having to animate the other side separately. I'm not sure if that made any sense. Um, 
We'll see what I mean in a moment. I've just about finished here. All right, that's the last one. So they should be swinging in tandem now. And they are. So that, <laughs> that looks quite funny, actually. Um, but all right, let us hide the, uh, the left side, um, his left side. And um, we want to offset this now. So if we go to the center frame, which is nine, and just select all these keyframes and uh, just drag it so that the last frame becomes the center frame. So you can see it's now uh, offset correctly. So now um, at frame one, we need to drag the rest of these over onto the other side. And you can see this frame, uh, these two frames are the same. So we can overlap those. And now we're just missing our last frame, frame 17. So we'll just alt right click this first column of keyframes, shift D and duplicate it over there. And there we go. Let's uh, unhide the rest of the bones. And I'm just gonna hide them all together so we can have a look at our lovely run cycle. I'd say that looks pretty cool. All right, so I hope you've managed to follow along and uh, learn something about animating run cycles. Um, if you have any questions or any suggestions for future videos, just uh, leave a comment and I will see what I can do. Um, yeah, hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Cheers.